second barrel, oh, done. Whose idea was it to fish? The furthest point from both car parks. Well, in fairness, the wind is pushing down this way and we have seen fish, so. Oh, take the leg work out. Oh. That's gonna get tiring over the next few days, isn't it? I think that's enough huffing and puffing for an intro. <laughs> you join us on the banks of Burners Hall Fishery in Ongar, Essex, and uh, very hot and sunny at the moment, but mm. um, early we were getting windswept and chilly. Yeah, very cold on the other side of the mm -hmm. lake, but very warm on this side. So uh, first impressions, bring clothes for both winter and summer <laughs> if you're fishing here, because it can be the same, depending on what part of the lake you're on. Yeah. But uh, very sunny at the moment, high pressure, so weather's kind of against us a bit for this session, but feeling confident seeing fish show, Fairly busy, I'd say, what, eight people on at the moment? Yeah, about that, dotted around the lake, so hopefully that's gonna keep the fish moving about a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, first impressions are good. It's, it's a nice big open water. It's about 24 acres in total, obviously when it's full up, because we're kind of sitting within the lake at the moment. Although acreage probably doesn't change too much, but depth no. has, it's down, I'd say a good six, seven, maybe even eight feet. Yeah, last time I was here, it was lapping over this, and at the yeah. moment, it's uh, probably a good 12 feet away from us down there, but mm. there's, Still six to seven hundred fish in here, and uh, yep, in a less smaller, water. Smaller so concentration of water. Like to think we do all right here, and but there's, um, there's quite a decent stock as well, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So there's at the moment there's forty nine different thirties and a couple of forties. Yes. So yeah, all being well, we get amongst them. But the nice little thing about it is, if you do catch a thirty, then you get to name it as well. If it's unnamed. If it's unnamed. And of unknown. Course, yeah. <laughs> you can't just yeah. rename one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you um, can't just scrap out someone else. Fishing here as well is from pre-booking only, so you ring up see if you've got any availability and get in. You can't just rock up and fish. You've got to pre-book your uh, getting on your fishing. That's not an issue at the moment. There's, I think we said eight on here, so yeah. it's not too busy. And what we were hearing in the tackle shop, once it starts to get a bit too busy, they do stop the booking. So it's not like you're gonna turn up to an absolutely round lake. No. And uh, uh, facility-wise as well, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, there's a toilet block when you first come in in the first car park. There's actually three car parks dotted around the lake. Two over the far side behind the camera are quite close to each other. And then you've got one just right to the entrance of the, the lake itself. So you've got access to most of the lake and drive around probably three quarters. Bar where we're fishing, we decided yeah. to walk because we just fancied being a bit awkward and uh, tire ourselves out. Pretty much right at the start, <laughs> yeah. But uh, also just over the road, probably 30 seconds from the gate mm -hmm. of getting in here is Total Fish and Tackles uh, Tackle Shop. And they've got a whole range of different brands in there. Top brands, all terminal tackle, bait, also clothing from Navitas. So if you want to, yeah stock up on anything if you're getting low or when you get here just grab stuff you can do you don't have to drive miles to find a tackle shop there's one right next door mm, always handy but, um, time for our lens flip as to which swim we're in i don't know if yeah, i have so a lens on me cap? no this wasn't really planned there's no. a bottle cap in front of me there. bottle cap will do so right. bottle cap up this swim bottle cap down left swim okay. you go first i'll go first yep down down you want that swim down there, so I've got a barrier. I don't have further. to move all my gears in this <laughs> swim, which is quite handy. So, right. next time you see us, we'll probably have done some prep work, got the rods out, and we'll give you a little recap of everything we've done. Mm. Let's go. Let's get cracking.
Well, as you can see from behind, the sun is down. It's been a glorious sunset, but it does signify that the day has just disappeared from us. I have no idea where it's gone. We, uh, we haven't even got a bivy set up or anything yet. We've just, nope. just got the rods out. That's the important bit. We found spots, which yep. was the important thing. And we both did pretty much the same thing. We flung the deeper out mm -hmm. just to get a general idea. And uh, it wasn't that conclusive. So I stuck a lead while no, we both stuck lead on and found that there was, yeah, it, it, it's clear in a lot of places, but some of the up and down, it's a bit like what we're setting our rods up really. There's some big rocks and things. I think that's what it was picking up. So put yeah, you the- feel uh, it pinging over each time, definitely. don't you? Definitely. And uh, put the lead on, found some nice clear areas. I've actually got three rods now probably within a rod and a half of each other, just in a line, a bit of bait over the top, and you've done pretty much a similar, haven't you? Yeah, very similar. Again, put the deeper out to start with, but it is very up and down all over the place. So we, you can see the weed is quite visible. So we've come just off the weed beds and yeah, getting a nice donk on the lead. So again, three rods on one spot, probably about 10, 15 spoms out. Mm -hmm. So a fair, fair bit of bait, but hopefully we'll just yeah. get a bite or two. Just to see, because you don't want to kill the swim completely if it's not what they're responding to. But if we end up having a couple of fish and it dries up, then it sort of tells us tomorrow to maybe put out a bit more. But that is us kind of set up. But like I said, swim's a tip, which is why we thought we'd give you the lovely sunset backdrop because nothing is tidied or sorted. So before light completely goes, I think, yeah, let's get, up, food get set on. up and get some food, I think. So and a cup of tea. You do the brew. Yep, as usual. <sighs> We've just come into our first morning here at Burners and last night was pretty uneventful for both me and Joey. Had a couple of beeps on my left rod, but that was about it. After getting the rods out just before sunset, the temperature really did plummet. The lake, the wind on the lake completely stopped and everything was just really still, clear skies and yeah, nothing happened at all overnight. A couple of swims down, a guy at first light this morning had a take, 24 pound mirror, and he'd been putting quite a bit of bait out. So I think the plan for today is to obviously double check our spots make sure they're still clear because where the weed's dying off there's a lot of weed moving around but get a bit of bait out as well so i think we're gonna leave it another couple of hours about 10 o'clock so a couple of hours just in case we do nick a bite and uh, after that just get a bit more bait out and see what the day brings <laughs> We're currently joined by Andy. Thank you very much for coming down. You own this place, so I thought it'd uh, be a good chance to have a little chat with you, find a bit more about the place while it's quiet on our session. To be honest, the whole, the whole session's been quiet so far, but uh, <laughs> it's not you, so. in. <laughs> um, tell us a bit more about the place, like how you came about to have it in stock and all sorts, really. Sure. Well, we came, uh, we got asked to take it on about five years ago. I was running another fishery close by, so I knew of it. and. Uh, uh, we took it on about uh, actually six years ago, uh, stocked it with uh, a lot of fish that we uh, had ready in various stock lakes for something like this. Um, kept it closed for about a year and then opened it, I think it was uh, March, April 2015. Okay. Um, it's, uh, we wanted to have it as an open access water for all people. Not uh, There's a lot of pressure for syndicate lakes and for the size of fish and the head of fish we've got in here. Um, but we wanted it to be open for everybody to have a chance to catch some of the uh, better fish and not have to join necessarily syndicates all the time to get into 30s and 40s and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, having said that, we do have a small membership, so for the real regulars that want to make it a little bit more uh, cost effective, then there is a small membership that you can join. Now we're obviously currently on the main reservoir lake, but we've got two lakes just the other side of the uh, far bank. Can you tell us a bit about them as well? Sure, yeah, I mean, when I took this lake on, there was a meadow over there not being used for anything. I, I managed to get planning permission to put uh, two lakes down there. We wanted to have uh, a choice of fishing for people. Obviously, we've got a very big exposed reservoir here. It's 24 acres, there's 24 swims. You need to check the weather and keep an eye on mm -hmm. the kind of equipment you need, depending upon whether it's sun cream or, or the thermals, etc. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've, we've got two lakes down in the meadow. They're really sheltered. So you've got the river one side of you, you've got the reservoir here acting as a big barrier. Um, they're nice intimate lakes. They're also stocked mainly with the same cross section of carp as we've got in here. Um, we've got meadow lakes, the, uh, the bigger of the two, it's about 1.7, 1.8 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, there's five swims on there, but really we have three or four people on at a time. It's just to give them a choice. It's very popular because you can doesn't cost you any more you just pay for the swims and uh, mm -hmm. you get the lake exclusively to yourself we keep a picnic bench and barbecue down there 
it's a nice one where the guys want to just fish together, have a bit of a social, but still catch some nice fish. There's a really good head of 20s in there. Uh, and also, I think there's three 30s in Meadow Lake as well at the moment. So, um, it's, although a small lake, there's some still cracking fish to go for. Yeah, definitely. Right next to that is uh, Poulton's Lake. Again, it's uh, same same idea, but it's only got two swims, so it's a great father and son or a couple of mates that want to have just a fish to themselves, lake to themselves, book the two swims and it's yours. Um, you've got about 55 carp in there, I think, at the moment. Again, average is just around the £20 mark, and there is a 30 or two to go for as well. So something for everyone. They are a bit younger. They've been planted with all your reeds and rushes. It's not got the up and down water that you have here, and they're maturing fast, actually. Sounds good. What sort of prices are you looking at for day tickets? Or Sure, yeah, 24 hours. So, I mean, most people on big water like this generally are doing you know, 24 hours or longer. Uh, 24 hours for three rods is £30. Uh, so a weekend session, 48 hours is £60. Uh, you can do a week ticket on here for £150 for the guys that actually want to do a bit longer and it gets a bit cheaper as well. Um, we've got a good stock of all different types of uh, strains of carp in here, so they're all, all very different, you know, no, no two fish the same generally, so every time those alarms go off you're not really sure which, what fish you're going to be catching. What um, size? Average size, I would say, is just uh, just, just about a low somewhere. 20 at the moment. Uh, we've got uh, currently 49 different 30s in here. Um, any day we're expecting a new one, so no pressure, Joe, but you can get to name it if uh, you catch a new 30. Try um, and there's uh, three, four 40s in here at the right time of the year. Um, so there's some real nice target fish. There's some um, different named fish that people have been trying to tick off the list. There's mm -hmm. some ornamentals. We've got linears. We've got good head of fully plated, some heavily scaled fish, um, all different variants, as I say, from different dealers. Mm -hmm. As well as that, there is, a, for the guys that like it, uh, the only predator really in here is uh, we do have a handful of catfish, licensed catfish of 14 catfish. They average about 35, 40 pounds in size, and there are two at over 70 pounds in here now as well. We'll certainly know if we hook one of them. You will know when you hook one of them. Having said that, a few of the guys have caught uh, one of the bigger 40s in here, thought they'd been playing the catfish a number of times, and then suddenly he pops up right in yeah. front of the net, and they're like, oh my God. Yeah, so. <laughs> now, also, we're fishing sort of one end of the lake and we found clear spots. I'm fishing right next to the weed. Bottom seemed quite varied on the, on the deeper when we put out yesterday. Sure. What, what can people expect when they're fishing here with sort of bottoms? And I presumed when I first took this on, I'll be honest, that it was just a reservoir that's just completely uniform apart from having this one island, um, not even in the middle of the lake, you know. Um, but actually, as we, that first year when we had it and got to know the lake a little bit and we were out on the boat and feeding it and things like that, yeah, we found actually that there's a quite a more features out there than what yes. you expect. Um, a lot more guys, the water's quite down now at the moment. It is a working reservoir and the water height goes up and down, but obviously the features at the bottom stay the same. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's generally we've got a really firm clay out there. There's a lot of chalk and a few flints, so you have to be careful of cutoffs. Don't slack line. Um, we don't, we have a no leader rule on here and barbless hooks only because at different times, different years it's different, but we can have some quite heavy weed beds out there. We do uh, take care of some of the weed on different years if it's bad, to make sure there's always some clear spots and mm -hmm. to help you keep the, uh, the landing fish, not just catching them. Yeah. Um, so I think that probably covers it. I mean, yeah, yeah I don't want to give all the spots away, but <laughs> there are variants. There's smooth clay, there's rough stone, there's chalk areas, there's weed beds, there's some ups and downs of some gullies and things things like that. Yeah. But I think we're definitely where we're finding pulling the lead back is kind of this sort yeah. of bottom. You're yeah. hitting some of the bigger rocks as well sure. coming in but on the whole we're pretty clear in front of us as well. That's it. There's, as you say, I, you know, look at the low water now. Generally it is what's out there but mm -hmm. there's some variance in heights and there are some areas that are actually void of stones completely and you'd think you're pulling a, a lead back across silt to be honest but actually it's just super smooth clay. Yeah. Um, and it just slides back over and then it's da -da 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 into mm -hmm. the stones and then maybe locked up into a weed bed and things. So yeah. they're quite easy to distinguish when you, we generally say to people, just fill the lead down. You really will feel cracked down if you're on a clear spot mm -hmm. because it is, as you can see, firm, hard clay with a bit of stone down yeah. there, so. But can you still catch fish if you're more in the, the dirtier areas and the weed and stuff? For sure. I mean, honestly, there's no rules on here. I mean, all different tactics have worked at different times and margins. People generally get here and think big water, so we've got to cast out and then fish are moving underneath their lines and their rods and they're like, oh my God, what have I done? Just put all my bait out there, you know. Um, so zig fishing works in high pressure. I mean, some surface fishing does work as well, but generally they, they do respond quite well to big beds of bait. As I say, it's a big water. They do move around in here in, in different size shoals and the guys that actually do really well are the ones that can hold the fish, not just catch a few. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, once you know you're on them, keep the bait going in and generally you'll have a good, 
good session. Nice. Well, fingers crossed something turns up within the last few, uh, what well, we've got today and tomorrow, potentially into Friday, depending on how, uh, how desperate we're getting. But uh, <laughs> thanks for having us down. Pleasure. It's Welcome pleasure. anytime. Uh, hopefully we'll have a few for the camera. Fingers crossed. about half one and the rods have been in for about the last hour or so. When I brought them back in they were nice and clear so I've put quite a bit more bait out. I've probably put about four kilos out in total, a mixture of 15 and 20 mil Atlantic crab boilies from Mistral. There's fish down this end so I'm not too worried about baiting heavily. I think it's just a matter of time before they actually get on it. Whilst the rods are in I've had to do a bit of filming of a new pod that I'm reviewing and I'm just about to do a little quick shop run because it's boiling hot as you can see and I'm really fancying a nice cold Dr Pepper. There's a Sainsbury's a few miles down the road, so I'm going to get that, get back, get the rods out, and then chill out for a bit. Just finished the interview with Andy. It's nice to find out a bit more about the lake, and I hope that gives you guys a bit more information on it too. As we were doing that filming, and while we've been talking with him, we've seen a fair few fish showing right down the uh, far end of the lake. There's no one fishing down there. Well, the wind's been pushing ever since we got here, and it seems like there's a few fish down there enjoying the uh, the wind and all the freebies that they might be getting down there. So, you know, whip my rods in. I need to clip them up and redo them for the evening anyway. Got a couple of bags in my pocket. I'm just going to walk down there with the baits that are on there flick a couple of rods out in amongst where I can see some of the clouded up water and hopefully try and get a fish that way. If not, get back later on and I think takeaway is on the cards because there's a couple of takeaways nearby that deliver and uh, it'd be rude not to uh, sample some of the local delicacies, whether it be Chinese or Indian, while we're down here. So uh, whip the rods in, go down there and see if we can get something. minute once again I think last night I was the still putting bait out this sort of time well, it's earlier evening like it's getting darker earlier now isn't it, it? Is. and uh, yeah I mean I've got them all on one spot again seen some fish over there this morning on a small amount of bait yeah guy next door had one on quite a bit of bait so I think we've both gone the same approach with quite a lot on a spot really yeah yeah I've, obviously I've got mine out a little bit earlier and left the uh, spot clear for a couple of hours but Again, yep, fighting against time. You got your odds out all, all nice and neatly, didn't you? Yeah, and you've got one down in the bottom where the wind's been pushing the last day or yeah. two. Yeah, so obviously you've done a little bit of bit of stalking earlier and you saw quite a few down there. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately it didn't, didn't lead to a bite, but there's definitely a lot of fish down there. So I've oh, moved my left arm right down the end, right tight against the bank. And it's probably about three or four foot, put quite a bit of bait around it. So I'm hoping, I think if any of them go, it could quite well be that one. Definitely. Hopefully the fish get on the munch. We're putting out the bait for them. 
Yeah. And yeah. talking of munch, I can't be bothered to cook, and Andy gave me the number for a local Indian. Yes, I heard they deliver right to the gate as well. They do so. indeed. So, uh, mine's a biryani. Do you want to make the call? I think I'll make the call in a second, yeah. While I ring the dinner bell. Yeah, temperature's definitely dropping again already, isn't it? So, yeah. we we'll make this call, get a nice Indian, and then chill out. Apologies for lack of updates today. It's been an absolute scorcher. Unfortunately, Luke lost one fairly early this morning, followed by me losing an absolute melter. So feeling a little bit downheartened and knowing that I'm going home this evening, this one's just melted off. And, uh... Him quite steady because although I wouldn't normally keep loosening the clutch like this, I'm bringing the rods in within the next hour or so. Do not want to lose this one. Yes. Yes. And Jerry. Thanks, Saber. Oh, that has been hard fought. A 20 actually. That's a nice looking fish, Joe. Yeah. Was that for perfection lovely way to end the session we've been a bit deflated today after both losing one but this one's just gone off probably an hour before i'm going to be off the session off the session because so i've got to shoot home get editing done tomorrow luke might stay another night but after this we feel like this is an accomplishment for both of us we've worked for this and this is by no means a big one for an air 23 pound 12 ounce it goes over twice this size but immaculate and this is what burns Hall has to offer i did have to work for this one but uh, I'm sure we'll be back. I know that this place has some winter form, but flip, because it's such a big expanse of water, this place takes longer to cool down. So uh, you do get winter form here. One last look at this beauty in this lovely sun. Maybe not. That's it for me. I'm gonna shoot on and uh, result. Another glorious sunset you're set to enjoy. Yeah, it is indeed. Your eyes are uh, in now, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Done one barrel load to the car, and next one's about to go. But <laughs> I'm tired. I've caught a fish, so I can go home happy. Yeah, but, uh, some of us still got to work at it. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you will. You've got plenty of fish in front of you, and from what we've seen the last couple of nights, they do seem to come across on the bait. Yeah, there's been at a lot once. showing in that bay as well, hasn't there? Where I have got one rod down the edge where I did have a take earlier, mm -hmm. and now the wind has switched around. I'm hoping. And bring them back out but mm -hmm, keep, definitely keep hoping that the wind's gonna help us out and hasn't yet for yeah <laughs> well with my spot is um, as you saw i was putting out plenty of bait 
last night and just sort of sat, put the rods out and left them. Lost that one this morning and instead of disrupting the spot, I didn't cast that one back out on the same spot because I still had two within the very same vicinity basically of where I had that take. There's a fish just showed already right down still, the bay. Still in the bay um, and just left the other two and just pinged the other one as far as I could where we'd seen some other fish showing. That one didn't produce anything, but one of the ones they left did rattle off and that was that beautiful common. So they clearly moved across the bait, probably not in numbers, but when the fish did come across, I picked up a bite. It's a shame I lost that one, but it did pay off putting out that bait, sitting on the spots and uh, just leaving it because no one's been having it off. This no, is safe I to say. That's, like, that's the only fish since the one yesterday morning was it? Uh, the one down there had one I saw earlier. Yeah, but, uh, well, I haven't heard of anything else coming yeah. out of the lake. It's quite a quick turnaround of fishermen as well. I think mm. over the, the course of the few days we've been here, there must have been 15 or more anglers on here. Yeah. And we've seen three fish, including my one. So it uh, has been, been pretty tough. 24, 48 hours on Yeah. It? And going from there. So, so fingers crossed you will uh, make it the fourth one. I'm sure you will. That Hopefully. sun's just starting to dip. Yeah. But, uh, so it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Lovely Indian last night, what's your plans for tonight? Just chill out I think, banging out from the sun, <laughs> another really hot day and I'm sure it's going to be another really cold night as well. Mm -hmm. Checked my phone earlier and it's been highs of 22 and lows of 9. It's okay. quite, a, quite a fluctuation. It's that time of year and that's, that's what I was saying at the start of the video is, is when you do come here, no matter what time of year, bring clothes that are warm and the clothes that are, are cooler as well. Today we needed shorts and t-shirt but nights or when the wind picks up you really do need a jumper on thermals and what Andy was saying yesterday on the same day, people on one bank can be in shorts and t-shirt, people yeah. on the other can be in full thermal wear, right salopettes right. and all. So do come prepared when you come here because it's such an open place, it uh, really can whip the wind around. But um, I've now got to venture on the N25, which is always a joy. Yeah, at least you're off the rush now. <laughs> yes, that's the, that's the plan. And hopefully I've missed the worst of it, but the N25 is never nice. Anyway, that's me. Cheers, I'll see you next week in the office. I hope you like the video that we've made for you. Unfortunately, there wasn't a bit more fish action, but that is just how carp fishing goes. I think since we've been here, there's only been one other fish out, so we can't really complain too much with Joe having that common yesterday. Obviously, if you do want to find out a bit more information about Burners Hall, definitely check out their website. Loads of information on there. Obviously, you've got all the address on there as well, ticket prices, fish stock, and it actually shows you some of the fish as well, so it really does whet the appetite. But for more videos like this, obviously, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you've got a venue in mind that you think it'd be worth us coming to, definitely let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. So he literally couldn't make this up. Just before Joe left yesterday, literally 10 minutes before bringing his rods in, he had an absolute screamer, which resulted in that lovely common. Again, today, one day later, 10 minutes before bringing my rods in, middle rod absolutely screamed off. Definitely not the biggest in here, and they probably go about four times this size. So there's loads to aim for, but after three nights without catching anything, hardly seen a fish on the bank, size really doesn't matter, does it? Especially when they look like this. Awesome looking stocky, which in a few years time will be a mega, mega fish. So yeah, thanks very much to Burners Hall for having us down here, and uh, can't wait to get back really. Again, cheers for watching.